We're going to take a few minutes as a segue to the next session, um, probably as a prelude to the topic. Um, one of the things that we, when we first started working with Forbes two years ago on this summit, identified with them is the incredible amount of information that is contained not only in this room, but also if we did the research, is contained across ultra high net worth philanthropists globally. And that we thought that information could be really helpful in helping us and you understand trends and issues. It could be helpful helping new philanthropists learn from other philanthropists, which candidly is one of the reasons for this gathering and the networking time. And um, to that end, we wanted to share with you some of the results of this year's research study, as well as take a few moments to ask you some questions uh, and so that you can get a sense for how those in the room view or are pursuing a couple of things that we asked the broader population about. And then we will turn it over to our distinguished panel and we'll segue a little bit towards that topic as we ask these questions. Uh, first thing, let me tell you about the research study. Forbes Insights um, re, uh, did a research study and they surveyed over 300 uh, wealthy philanthropists around the globe and it was truly a global uh, effort. Um, a th good number of them were ultra high net worth, uh, over $10 million, I would say a good third of them. <laughs> And it was a wide-ranging survey on a host of issues. I'll only touch on a few of them here, um, but that survey results will be published in the future. And so you can look at it and learn more about it um, when that comes out. Um, some of the questions asked are questions that we're going to ask you through a uh, hopefully fun, um, interactive question and answer. You each should have in front of you uh, this keyboard um, you will see on the screen, I hope, the question, and you will have one to four or five options. You just have to put in the number. Uh, there will be a time period, about 10 seconds, and at the end of the 10 seconds, we will see what the results are. First question, what percentage of your philanthropy focus on global causes as opposed to local domestic initiatives? All right, so a, I would say a good 33% or 50% or more as I read through this. Um, when we looked at the survey results, uh, North Americans tended to have the smallest percentage allocated to global causes, around 23%. Europeans, the highest percentage, about 34%. But when you surveyed philanthropists with over $50 million, it was north of 40%, closer to 50%, which is sort of similar to you guys, uh, which is consistent. Obviously, the more wealth you have, perhaps the greater your means to promote and support broader, more expensive causes in other parts of the world. Or, and I think this is also part of it, you understand the depth of the challenges and your ability on a sort of return on investment basis to have a dramatic change and alleviating poverty is just one of those areas. Uh, next question, please. What is the most critical factor in choosing which initiative to fund? Well, by a leading margin, the idea or premise of the initiative which makes sense. Uh, you give what you care about. There's no question about it. The leader in charge of the initiative is second. The organization is third. Uh, in some respects, this is a bit of a trick question. The reality is you need all three of these. You have to be passionate about what you want. You have to pick the, an organization that is best at what it's doing, and that organization has to be led appropriately. And that's one of the learnings that has come out of this session and last year's session was that leadership mattered in philanthropy. Organizations mattered in philanthropy and how they went about doing it. So, um, and many of those are learnings that we hope to take back to the broader population, particularly of emerging philanthropists 
who might otherwise not focus as intently on those incredibly important variables? Uh, third question. Is it important to you that your children focus on the same areas of philanthropic interest as yours? Well, by a wide margin, no, not important at all. Yes, somewhat important. This question and the next one get to the topic that you're going to hear about next, which is involving children in philanthropy. I will tell you a good 80 to 90 percent of our survey respondents say they do involve their children in philanthropy, which is a best practice. There's no question, given the universal desire to raise well-adjusted children and the challenge of doing so with wealth, that one of the tried and true mechanisms by which to do that is to use philanthropy in a host of ways. However, how you use your philanthropic efforts matters greatly in terms of how successful you'll be in accomplishing the objective of raising well-adjusted children. And the panel that you're going to hear from next is going to talk about some of their experience. It doesn't mean that their way is necessarily the right way, but I think you will learn and the other uh, wealthy families hopefully who read about this, as well as the survey results, will appreciate those learnings and take some of them to heart. Final question, what have you found to be the greatest challenge on cultivating responsible wealth stewardship among your children? the need for greater self-sufficiency and initiative, uh, which I think is appreciated uh, across the board. The question perhaps I'll leave you with as we go into the next session is, how does your philanthropy, the entities or institutions you conduct your philanthropy through, the mechanism by which you involve your children, how in fact you involve them, what you ask of them or just make available to them, how do you conduct all of that in an effort to achieve what you say here, rightly so, is the most important? So with that, uh, I appreciate your attendance, and we will move on to the next section. Thank you.